Hello everyone, sitting here with Dr. Fabian Petoya from Argentina. Fabian, welcome. Thank you very much for the invitation. So good to see you. It's been a long time. Yes, a long time. And the topic is the treatment of advanced thyroid cancer. Yes, we, we are very um, enthusiastic with uh, the new uh, things that we are learning about the treatment of uh, advanced thyroid cancer. And when we talk about uh, advanced thyroid cancer, we usually have to split it into medullary thyroid cancer, rhyoidine refractory thyroid cancer, and then anaplastic thyroid cancer. If we go to the first group, the medullary thyroid cancer, we have now more therapeutic options. We have multi-kinase inhibitors, bandetanib and uh, cabozantinib that were already approved. And now we have salpercatinib and pralcetinib for those patients who are red positive. They have a red mutation. So we have several options for these patients and it really changed how uh, patients do with this kind of medications. I mean, the time the patient remain stable on their disease and they continue on survival. The second group of patients is the rhyoidine refractory thyroid cancer. This group of patients do not respond to rhyoidine, so they become refractory. And we have uh, options that were already approved, sorafenib and lambatinib, but now we also have specific genes that were found altered which can be targeted on. And these genes uh, are Entrac, BRAF, um, red PTC. So these alterations now have a specific treatments and also the response to treatments with these uh, new drugs, salpercatinib, pralcetinib, larotractinib, and tractinib are really very, very impressive with uh, overall response rates of almost 70 or 80 percent and median overall uh, survival not reached and median progression-free survival of almost three years. That means that these drugs, what they do is stop the disease, even we have complete response, the patient disappear all the metastatic disease, and we have long time of action of these drugs. This changes a lot. And the most important thing is what happened for anaplastic thyroid cancer. This group of patients died in uh, one year and now we have options at least for those patients who harbor a mutation which is the BRAF mutation and for those patients the combination of debrafenib and trametinib and if you can do uh, a, a surgery, neoadjuvant therapy, I mean you use debrafenib trametinib uh, and then you go to the surgery you may have even complete response in a patient who uh, before didn't have any alternative. You didn't have any option. So this changed the world for uh, anaplastic thyroid cancer. So I think that for uh, as these uh, new drugs open uh, a new window for uh, hope for this group of advanced thyroid cancer patients. Great. Um, for any patient that might be watching this interview, um, what is the progression from maybe papillary thyroid cancer to advanced? Can it happen? Yes, it may happen. Uh, around 10% of papillary thyroid cancer may present with advanced disease. The same happens with medullary thyroid cancer, which may present with uh, around 20% of patients with advanced disease and all the anaplastic thyroid cancer usually have advanced disease. So it is something that happens infrequently uh, f for uh, differentiated and medullary thyroid cancer, but we see it a lot as a referral center in our hospital. So most of our patients are advanced. And we're talking about then four different types of thyroid cancer. Medullary, papillary, follicular, both of them are rhyoidine refractory thyroid cancer, differentiated. We can also include there the poorly differentiated thyroid cancer and then the anaplastic thyroid cancer. Are the symptoms different for each? Yes, of course. When we have uh, advanced medullary thyroid cancer and we have metastatic disease, we can have symptoms that are produced by some uh, proteins secreted by the tumor and some of them one of them is the calcitonin there are others they may produce diarrhea as a symptom uh, when there is advanced disease when, when there is a large tumor burden 
and uh, for uh, papillary thyroid cancer you only may have symptoms if you have a locally advanced disease I mean when you have a tumor that invaded and you can see in the neck and, and probably it is unresectable and then you, we have now new options for treating these patients are there characteristics to the patients that you have noticed that are more common in certain types of cancer no i think it uh, it you don't have a, a specific thyroid cancer when it's when it is locally advanced it will produce the same th symptomatology I mean, a uh, patient will have a, a, a lump in the neck which is uh, invading the structures and may produce uh, local symptoms. How common is the advanced thyroid cancer? Luckily, it is uncommon, uh, but probably we are, we are biased because we see as a referral center a lot of patients with advanced thyroid cancer, but when you look the whole population of differentiated thyroid cancer, I mean papillary thyroid cancer, you will find that 90%, 95% of them will have a curable disease with no other problem. Then the other will be pro patients that we have recurrent disease, but this is not advanced thyroid cancer. They can be cured with a new surgery. And then advanced thyroid cancer is when you have metastatic disease and this metastatic disease becomes rhyoid and refractory. Mm. Um, what can you tell those watching who have uh, more serious forms of thyroid cancer that is reason for being optimistic more today than they could have been five years ago. Yeah, sure. I, I always try to say when, when I have a patient like that that is very, very uh, upset or probably uh, very sad because of he, his thinking about death, I think we have an, a lot of options right now and we can prolong the time for these uh, disease to progress. So this is something that changes a lot and the patient, when the patient understands, because sometimes in this patient you do not do anything, just you make an active surveillance, mm -hmm. the same that you do with a, a papillary thyroid cancer, you can do it with a metastatic disease mm -hmm. in the lung. If it's a tiny metastatic disease, the patient can be stable at five, six years uh, until you decide, well, the patient progressed, the lesions grow, grew up, so you can now start, for example, a multi-kinase inhibitor. Then you have different lines. You can use one, and then you stop the progression for two, three, five years, and then you can use a second line, and then you can go to analyze the genes and to know if there is a specific mutation to use in a specific drug, and then you can have uh, even longer uh, progression free survival. That means that the lesions will remain stable with new lines of treatment. So this changed a lot. We had only one line that was serafinib at the, uh, in 2013. Now we have serafinib, lambatinib, dabrafenib, trametinib, and then uh, depending on the mutation, salpercatinib or prasetinib or lartractinib or entractinib. And these opens new windows and new hope for the whole population of patients with thyroid cancer. And you did two presentations on this topic already at the World Congress on Thyroid Cancer here in London. Um, what, were, what was some of the response? We had two. One is uh, telling the, the story from the Latin America perspective. It, it's something that probably is different, how we have to be creative with things. We have to move on uh, differently. Luckily, in Argentina, at least, we have all the drugs available except for salpercatinib and bralcetinib. And, but the rest are available and, uh, and it is almost always reimbursed uh, so we can use it in every patient. It is not the case for all the countries in Latin America. So mm -hmm. showing their, that reality is uh, interesting to show how in different parts of the world we cannot do the gold standard. We need to adapt, we, ha we need to be creative and, and then to again press the industry to bring these drugs to our countries. Mm. Uh, before we say farewell on this topic, any final thoughts to share with them? Well, I, I just uh, to say, I, I always want to transmit to the patient that there, is, there are options, that you need to be calm. There are options. You need to search for uh, people who specifically treat 
thyroid cancer, the advanced thyroid cancer. This is not something that any oncologist can treat or any endocrinologist can treat. There is a groups, uh, referral groups in each country. You need to search for those groups in order to find the correct option for your disease. Thank you. Thank you. Farewell, everyone.